Hello, and welcome back. Nice to see you again. Today I want to talk a little bit about statins. These are uh, medications that are used for treating high cholesterol. I'm not, a, let me preface this by saying I'm not a medical doctor, obviously. I'm not a nurse. I'm not um, in the medical profession at all. I'm not even a veterinarian. But I can talk about things from personal experience and observation experience. And to me, statins are not good. They're just not good for you. They, 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 they're great in the beginning. Like, for example, I, uh, 2016, I had a heart attack. I was rushed to the hospital. They had to clean my arteries out, put in stents, and I had to do rehab, physical rehab, and other things. And uh, they put me on a lot of medications. One of them was a statin. And that was very important at that time. Now, during the next year, as I built myself up physically, got my heart working better, arteries getting used to the changes, a lot of those little medications fell off because they weren't needed anymore. But the one thing that didn't fall off was the statin. And during that... Uh, period of time, I had a lot of physical issues. I had headaches, headaches behind the eyes, weakness, I mean weakness, and fatigue, body pains, muscle pains, lack of interest in doing anything. It was very uh, difficult to, to even want to get up to do anything. So when I went back to my cardiologist for a follow-up, about six months after my uh, heart attack, or almost a year actually, he did the uh, echocardiogram and he did the other tests. You know, when they, EKG would have put the stickers on you and then pull off your body hair. I tell people that's what happened to the hair on top of my head. A lot of medical tests. Everything was good. No no plaque buildup, no clogging heart function good. But I told my cardiologist all these physical problems I was having and lack of interest and fatigue and weakness. And he said, well, that's a statin. And he got out his notes, and he was saying, well, he had a schedule showing the other medications that had fallen off the list. And statin was scheduled to be to fall off my list, too. He didn't want me to take the statin. He strongly advised against it. He said the side effects of a statin strongly outweigh the benefits. So I went back to my doctor. And he he didn't know, he looked through his list, and he didn't know that I wasn't supposed to be on the statin anymore. I don't know if he just blew, blew my cardiologist off or he decided and decided, yeah, I need to be on a statin. He's an old guy who had a heart attack. But I got off the statins, and I was adamant with my doctor who, who wanted to, me to continue with it. I said, no. And in about a month, I was feeling back to my old self. I had energy again. I had strength. I had interest. No fatigue. Most of the body pains went away. And my father, who was also on a statin, He's almost 90. He has Alzheimer's and dementia. 
And I, I, when I took over his medication routine, I got him off the stat and I told the doctors in no uncertain terms he will not be taking a stat. Because I did a lot of research after my cardiologist got me off the statin and I got my life back after getting off that statin did a lot of research and I found out lots of things lots of side effects lots of potential problems with, with uh, statins you could, they could cause like, liver problems if you take them long enough you can cause diabetes if you take them long enough the mental problems, you know, memory problems. You could have memory problems down the line. So why would you give it to an Alzheimer's patient? I, I don't understand that. But I got my dad off that. And he improved. His memory improved a little bit. But his physical side improved dramatically. He was no longer too weak. To do this or that. And he kept going back to bed when it was on that stat, and he kept going back for a nap after a nap after a nap. He didn't have any energy or interest. After the statin, he can get up, go eat, and watch TV for the whole day. A lot of problems with statins, a lot of side effects, and some of them are low risk. However, when they interact with other medications that have similar side effects, that jumps up exponentially. And something my doctors, none of them, told me when they had me on this stat was never, ever, under any circumstances, eat grapefruit or drink grapefruit juice because that interferes with the enzyme and the metabolization or metabolizing of it it can put too much into your system more than expected and it can cause those low rank risks to jump up in severity so you could be having severe side effects whereas if you hadn't drank that that grapefruit juice you might not have. Wow. Who knew that? Grapefruit juice. But nobody told me that. Thank God I don't drink it. I have naturally high cholesterol. My entire family does. It's hereditary. So when I go to get my blood tests, everything's fine except for the cholesterol levels. They're always high. I do what I can do to mitigate that by eating right. But even if I eat right, even even family members who are thinner as rails or very active people, they have high cholesterol in their blood test. And I'm like, eh. But every time I go to the cardiologist and have the echocardiogram and other tests, hair ripping tests, Everything's fine. Nothing has progressed. Nothing's getting up. And, and my cholesterol is always high. I have found some things that help with that. And one thing specifically is Earl Grey tea. And this is decaffeinated. Earl Grey tea. A four ounce cup. And that's what a tea cup is. Four ounces. <laughs> Little. A cup of that every few days, it'll drop your cholesterol down dramatically. Even people like me with hereditary problems, or hereditary high cholesterol. Grapefruit juice can destroy you, but Earl Grey can bring your levels down. Unbelievable. But other things are, are very good for you, like broccoli. Broccoli is higher in protein than meat, actually. But the one thing broccoli does, from one of the many things broccoli does, is it clears out your arteries. It also 
pulls nicotine out of your system. It's one of the few things on the planet that will actually leach nicotine out of your uh, out of your system. It's very important for smokers, and I was a heavy smoker for a long time. All I got to do is look at my better walls, and you'll know how, <laughs> how big a smoker I was. And I also drink a little pomegranate juice several times a week. A little glass, not much. And I went to my doctor and I said, well, he was looking at my results and tests. And he said, well, uh, you're doing pretty good. How, what are you doing? And I listed the things I was doing and I mentioned pomegranate juice. And they said, yes, pomegranate juice. That's good for your heart. And I looked at him and I said, but the Actually, both doctors told me that, and I, I looked at both of them, and I said, how come you never told me that? I'm telling you, and you're agreeing with me, but you never told me that. Looking at their list. Oh, well, um, well, I can't, well, I can't say everything. But your tests are looking good. And that's the thing with doctors. You go in, even if they're personable and they seem to be really interested in everything about you, they don't know anything about you. When you go into the wedding room or the examination room and you sit down and you wait for them, they're not rushing in. They come in and they got to read your chart. They don't know anything about you. And after your appointment's done, and after they've sent out the prescription refill and made their notes, you're out of their mind. They push that out because they have other people they have to focus on. And when they're dealing with you, they're dealing with one specific thing, like your blood test, high cholesterol. Immediately, they say, you need a stat. You have to take one. Your, your level too high. They're not dealing with you as a whole person. They're dealing with one issue. They're not considering the, the whole or the drug interactions with the other medications you're taking. You never see your doctor looking at a medication that they're suggesting and cross-referencing it with other medications that you're taking to see what the interactions are. And those can be life-changing if the wrong combination is done. So I, non-professional, coming from personal experience and observational experience with my own father, and having feedback from all of my family, who are now all off statins, and they were almost all on them. Except one, one person, specific person, never got off the statin, and they're in a nursing home with lots of problems. I'm not saying it's a direct correlation, but it's just something to think about. My dad with Alzheimer's and dementia, he doesn't need memory problems. He doesn't need kidney problems. And me, I'm almost, I'm almost 60. I don't want to suddenly become a diabetic at 70 or 80 when I've never been a diabetic or even at risk beyond my usual eating the wrong thing. Uh, I think you should consider every medication your doctor gives you wants you to take, do your own investigation, real investigation, not just reading WebMD or one specific thing, read research materials, read test results of other people, interact with other people in the same situation, get real data, and come up with a solution for yourself, because once you're off the statin, you may have may be able to drop other medications that you're on if you're if you've got a lot. But do your due diligence for yourself. Be proactive for yourself. Don't just do what the doctor is recommending right then for that one specific thing. Because he's not looking 
at the hole. And I say he, but I mean he or she or it. I'm not coming up with new pronouns. He, she, or it. The Adams family had it right. He, she, and Cousin Ed. That's going to get a lot of bad comments. <laughs> but be proactive in your own health. And don't let the doctors push you into something. If something's not working for you, affecting your quality of life, you need to look at the benefits versus the side effects to see which is best for you. Do that. It's very important. Because they will shove as many medications at you as possible when you get older. Don't let them do that to you. Anyway, that's the serious topic I want to talk to you all about today. I hope it benefits some of you. I hope it benefits all of you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm restarting this video. <laughs> I want to cut out the cousinette part. It's going to get me murdered. Take care. I'll see you again soon here on my channel.